Hello everyone. There are many good multimeters on sale now, but not everyone has features such as a generator, a battery tester and VFC. This feature is very useful when repairing and configuring various converters and inverters. In this video, I want to talk about a multimeter that has all of the above functions. This is a ZTM1 multimeter from Zoe. In the description below this video, I will leave links to the official stores of this company where you can find out more information about this device and, if desired, purchase it for yourself. Well, now let's look at what this multimeter is capable of. The ZTM1 multimeter is sold in a box like this. Inside the box there is a cloth case in which it is convenient to store the multimeter and its accessories. The equipment of this multimeter is standard. Users instructions. A thermocouple. Probes. A multimeter. And also three batteries. First as usual let's look at the characteristics of this multimeter specified in the instructions. The screen resolution is 8000 reports. The indicators are updated on the screen 3 times per second. There are true RMS functions and also fixation of measurement results on the screen. There is a flashlight, low battery indication and auto power off. This multimeter can measure a constant voltage up to 1000 volts. At the same time, the margin of error will be only 0.5%. Measurement of AC voltage up to 750 volts. The margin of error is slightly more than 1%, measuring direct current up to 20 amperes and an error of 1.2%. Next page. It is also indicated here that this multimeter can measure direct current of very small value, that is microamps. Next, alternating current up to 20 amperes and also very small currents, microamperes. The margin of error in all ranges will be 1.5%. Resistance measurement up to 80 megaohms. Measuring capacity up to 100 millifreds, that is, up to 100,000 microfreds. The frequency is up to 10 megahertz. Filling from 1 to 99%. The last page with the specifications of this multimeter. Temperature measurement up to 1000 degrees Celsius. There are also standard functions for checking diodes and checking the electrical circuit. The ZTM1 multimeter can be used as a square wave generator with a frequency from 50 Hz to 5 kHz. Well, this device has excellent characteristics, thanks to which measurements will be accurate and fast. We will be able to verify this now. The thermocouple in this multimeter is very convenient and made with high quality. Multimeter probes. The wire is quite long and very soft. It's really silicone. And here is the multimeter itself. It has a fairly large size and looks good. As for his appearance, I really like him. On the back side there is a flashlight, a hole for mounting the multimeter on the wall and a mount for probes. There is also a stand. There are several function buttons under the screen. The first button is to switch the measuring range. Then select, switching some measurement modes. The next button turns on a function that not every multimeter has, this is a VFC feature. In fact, it is a low pass filter. It cuts off voltage fluctuations and results in more accurate measurements. An electric field indicator is located in the middle. Next is the row button, it turns on the relative measurement mode. And when pressed for a long time turns on and off the flashlight. The max minutes button is a measurement of the maximum and minimum values. And the hold button is the fixation of measurement results on the screen. The dial switch of measurement modes. 
This device is semi-automatic. So when measuring resistance and voltage, you can manually select the desired measurement limit, or the device will do it automatically. Another feature of this multimeter is the ability to test batteries, 1.5 volts, 9 volts and 12 volts. There are four probe connectors at the bottom, it's common, main, and two connectors for measuring currents. Now I will install the batteries, connect the probes and check the capabilities of this multimeter. The multimeter loads very quickly, the first point is MCV, that is, the detection of an electric field. It's a live wire. The electric field detection function works very well. The next item is the generator, the minimum frequency is 50 Hz. To test the oscillator, I will connect an oscilloscope. The output of the generator is 50 Hz, the oscilloscope shows exactly the same frequency, 50 Hz and a maximum voltage of 1.16 volts. Using the select button, you can change the frequency. 200 Hz. The oscilloscope has exactly the same indicators, 200 Hz, the voltage is 1.16 volts. Eight hundred hertz. The oscilloscope also has eight hundred hertz. Five kilohertz. The frequency is five kilohertz. The voltage is one point one four volts. But the shape of the signal is no longer rectangular at all. And the problem here is not in the oscilloscope, but in the generator. For example, I took another oscillator and set the frequency to five kilohertz. As you can see, the signal is quite rectangular in shape. The next three points are battery testing, 1.5 volts, 9 volts and 12 volts. To test the battery, the red probe needs to be moved into this socket. In this mode, the multimeter loads the battery and the current strength during the test is 10 milliamps. The result is under a load of 1.55 volts. Without load, the voltage of this battery is 1.58 volts. The battery is still pretty fresh. The second battery is 9 volts. First, I measure its voltage. 8.29 volts. Under load, the voltage drops to 4.9 volts. This suggests that this battery is no longer good for anything. The battery testing function works and it is very useful. The next few points are the measurement of resistance. The first range is 800 ohms, and the last is 80 megaohms. I'll check a few resistances. This is at 10 ohms. 10.8 ohms. Accurate enough. The next resistance is at 200 kilo ohms. 203.5 kilo ohms. And another resistance of 1.8 mega ohms. 1.82 mega ohms. Great. The next few points are the measurement of alternating voltage. The first item is 8 volts, and the last one is 750 volts. I measure the voltage in the household electrical network. 239 volts. By the way, here at the top of the screen, the frequency is immediately displayed, which is 50 Hz. The next four points are the measurement of a constant voltage from 8 volts to 1000 volts. The battery voltage is 1.59 volts, fast and accurate. Now I will connect the power supply, the output of which is 25 volts. The multimeter shows 25.28 volts. 
It is also worth noting that in addition to the digital scale, this multimeter also has an analog scale. While the power supply is connected, I will check the maximum and minimum value measurement function. First, the maximum value measurement mode is activated. 10 volts. Now, if you reduce the voltage on the power supply, the measurement result on the multimeter does not change because the device has memorized the maximum voltage. Another press of the button turns on the minimum value measurement mode. The multimeter shows that the minimum voltage that was recorded is 3.49 volts. zero point seven six volts another function is the relative measurement mode now the output of the power supply is five volts the device recorded this value now when you press the row button all subsequent measurements of the multimeter will be made relative to five volts that is five volts will be the reference point for it the relative measurement function in this multimeter also works without problems now the blue part of the mode dial switch begins, that is, measurements are already taking place in automatic mode here. The first point is the temperature measurement. To measure the temperature, you need to install a thermocouple instead of probes. When connecting a thermocouple, the polarity must be taken into account, that is, the negative pin must be installed in the black socket. I'm measuring the temperature of the tip of this soldering iron. Two hundred thirty degrees. The soldering iron has about the same temperature. The next three points are the measurement of the current strength. The first point is small currents, microamperes. The last point is high currents up to twenty amperes. To measure the current strength, the red probe must be moved to the appropriate socket. Now I'm measuring what current this lead strip consumes. I have connected this lead strip to the power supply and now I will gradually increase the current. The current strength is 0.1 microampere. Approximately 68 microamps. 186. 2150 microamps. That is, 215 milliamps. As you can see, this multimeter measures small currents very well. The next item is milliamps. This lead strip consumes approximately 260 milliamps at a voltage of 12 volts. The next point is to check the electrical circuit and sound the alarm. Next, check the diodes. With this multimeter, you can also check the LEDs. The voltage on the probes is 3 volts. The voltage drop on the red LED is 1.79 volts. The next position of the switch is to check the capacity, a 10 nanofarad capacitor. Exactly 10 nanofarads, great. Electrolytic capacitor for 100 microfarads. The multimeter shows 91 microfarads. Another 2200 microfarad capacitor. The result is 2240 microfarads. It took about 5 seconds for the multimeter to measure such a capacity. The next point is the measurement of resistance. When manually selecting the measuring range, the multimeter coped with this function perfectly. I'll check the automatic mode now. 10 ohms. 200 kilo ohms. 1.8 mega ohms. Great, fast and accurate. This is followed by a frequency measurement. 
To test this measurement mode, I connected a tone generator, and now let's see how the readings will match. 440 Hertz The multimeter shows almost 440 Hertz. 1 kilohertz. The same result is shown on the multimeter. 10 kilohertz. 9999 hertz. The next point is the measurement of a small DC voltage, that is, millivolts. I found an almost completely discharged battery. Let's see how tense she is. 386 millivolts. The next position is the measurement of a small alternating voltage. Then the measurement of the constant voltage. A little earlier, when manually selecting the measuring range, we could already make sure that this ZTM1 multimeter accurately and quickly measures voltage. The next item is the measurement of alternating voltage, frequency and also the VFC function. To test the VFC function, I connected an uninterruptible power supply to the battery. Without load, the output voltage of the inverter is 279 volts. When the VFC function is enabled, the multimeter shows a voltage of 275 volts. That is, the device filters out various leads and we can see a more accurate result. Also at this point, using the select button, you can turn on the frequency measurement mode. Using the hold button, you can record the measurement results on the screen and the result remains on the screen. When the row button is pressed for a long time, the flashlight turns on and off. So, after checking the ZTM1 multimeter, we can say with confidence that this is an excellent device, thanks to accurate and fast measurements, as well as additional functions such as battery testing and VFC. This multimeter will be very useful in any tuning and repair work. This concludes this video, if you liked it, then click the subscribe button so that you don't miss the new video on my channel, which will appear very soon, thank you for watching and see you soon.